Welcome to episode two of the Stranded Peacekeeper Challenge. Day one went extremely well for us and is actually one of the most explosive starts I've ever had in EFT, challenge or otherwise. We dropped multiple geared guys and gotten out with some insane loot for my level. I began day two with a fairly quiet woods raid and farmed up some nice hideout upgrades. We extracted at outskirts, which links us over to reserve, and that's where things really started to pick up. If you need a rules refresher for this challenge or if you're new here and would like to see episode one first, they're linked down in the description. And with that, let's begin episode two. There's a lot of shit going on, holy fuck. Oh man, I need this for Jaeger, but it has to be found in Raid, right? I think it does. Found in Raid. Fucker. Alright. He's above me, opening doors. There you go, there's the, there's the link. Jesus Christ. So yeah, there's a guy upstairs in my building and there's one nearby shooting. He's on the roof. surgery he's like right there I can't get up there quickly I would have to jump out the window to my right all the way down and up three stories motherfucker he's right above me though so you may be wondering why I'm just standing here on this table. I know there's a super geared guy above me doing surgery and he doesn't seem to know I'm here. The only way to get up to him is to jump out the window to my right, then up two flights of stairs giving him plenty of time to react. We're still very low level with no access to the flea market or item insurance as per the challenge rules so every death counts. With only regular 855 ammo available this early on we need to be careful, aim for the head, and strike when the moment is right. Yeah, that guy's pretty geared compared to me. Oh, wow. That startled me. <laughs> Fucking scab, man. I didn't know it was a scab. This guy's got a lot of raider loot on him, by the way. See all these found and raid mags? Are they full? That one's not. What's in it? Okay. Not bad. Actually, I should probably keep the mag. After a bit more looting in the area, it became apparent that my best exfil from here would probably be sewer manhole, even though it would mean having to drop my backpack to take it. We had two M1As and a bunch of 30 round mags and ammo for them, none of which I could buy yet. If I moved all the good stuff up to my pockets and chest rig and dropped the cheap stuff that I can buy again, such as painkillers, we could quickly secure all of it and end up on customs next where I had a ton of tasks and the marked key to potentially hit. I couldn't just let this awesome M1A sit in my stash to collect dust, so I took it in with me. Little did I know what fate had in store for us here. Oh my god. Should we just rush marked room? What if I was, what if it's a docs bag? I gotta do it, right? Whoa. 
That's for Shala. Ooh. Shooting, buddy. That's unfortunate. It really does slow my roll. Love to root loot the shithead though. How many did I kill? Pop a painkiller? Yeah, I will. Doesn't last very long. Fucking bitch! Fuck! This may not have been the best Rishala loot ever, but with this r and other decent stuff on me, it made sense to get out quickly before other PMCs came to investigate all the noise. This M1A had served me well so far and we had to head to woods next, so it made sense to keep using it. Tarkov is all about balancing risk versus reward, and in this one, we decided to push our luck even more. just go rush that but I shouldn't do that with this loadout. <laughs> Should stay task oriented still. We don't have a lot of gear. Could be fun to sneak up on them though. How did I kill him? The RGD got him, nice.
Fuck, I need to repack. Oh, I didn't grab his fucking grenades either. So let me break down what's happening so far since it might not be that obvious. We heard a loud M4 fighting someone with a semi-auto rifle earlier and decided to push it, figuring I'd clean up the winner. Instead, we caught a guy with a DVL and MPX, neither of the weapons I'd already heard. When a second guy came running my way, we shot him up a bit and he ran off and got into a fight with a third guy. At this point, I have no idea how many people are actually here or what we've really gotten ourselves into, so we back off a bit to repack magazines and listen for more audio cues to act on. Fucking hell, dude. Okay. I almost saw that guy through the bush when I was lying down, but I couldn't get the angle. Alright, let's dump some stuff we don't need. This would be nice to have. Rather where eh, this has been doing me okay. I don't really want the DVL. Not really gonna be able to use it anyway. For the challenge. Was there one more? I don't know. I just killed. Okay, he's got an M4. Is Gunslinger bigger? Oh, it's way bigger. What am I doing? Sorry guys. I'm a little like jittery from that, you know what I mean? I don't know guys, it's like way too much man, I'm too fat. 
65. Uh, A55 five five ammo. So get rid of that. Drink that. After a whole bunch more sorting and an extremely long walk, we finally made our way just outside the ZB14 exfil, which if taken would lead us into factory. I didn't have any quests in there just yet, but at this point, I just wanted to get the hell out of here with all this loot. Was he shooting at me the whole time? You want on Suka, get off me. Now dump the gear here and go back for the rest. Now that's loot goblin thinking right there. Ooh, no space for the PRS ammo. Drop cats, not hemostats. You know? I think you're onto something. Dude, no way. Fuck. All right, hold up. I can't buy these yet. I want it. Any more one slot? Yeah, 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 Good one! I'm a little sad I couldn't take the TV rig, but like overall, I mean, we got uh, three more guns that we can use that are like fairly decent. Some quest items, a little bit of equipment. That was a really important raid, that was a good one. Glad we got that extra M1 on the way out. I'd rather have that than the the R the uh, Remington right now. Let me double check though. Can I buy either one of those yet? I don't I don't think so. I think it's level three. Yeah, no, you can do the RFB, which is pretty nice. Kind of this is like a nice intermediate until you can get the M1s. This is actually way cheaper and more moddable too, or more more instantly moddable, like out of the box. You know what I mean? You don't have to do anything to it. It's got rails. Downside, uh, recoil sucks, and no flashlights. Did I have anything for her? Yeah, morphine. That was a nice find. Oh shit, she's level two. Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everybody, calm down. Wait, did they change this? Oh, it's they they reduced one horse. I was gonna say it used to be seven things, and it's six things. It used to be five horses. Oh, I could buy a junk box, you know, if I had money. Key tool. What's the key tool tray? Holy fuck. It's gonna take me forever to find all that. It'll look a lot better in the video and the transition like in and out will make more sense. Oh, syringes, man. Yo. Hooking it up, therapist. I needed a syringe for this. <laughs> okay. I can craft Salua's now. We gotta start grabbing those one of three hemostats. That's cool. <laughs> what do you guys think of this <laughs> sweet loadout? <laughs> Go into the meat grinder with this. Oh shit. I have three monitors, two on the gaming PC and one on the streaming. Oh, 
<laughs> I think I hit him in the leg. <laughs> I tried, man. Oh, God. That was hard. Sometimes you just get wrecked, but overall day two was a huge success. We came out with some great loot for being such a low level and got some quests and hideout progress in there as well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this series so far and what type of edits you might like to see in the coming episodes. Would you like to see more of the hideout and stash management or keep it more like this video where it's 90% in raid combat and looting or just any thoughts you have on it in general. You can also catch these raids as they happen live on Twitch four days a week, link down in the description. In the meantime, I'm working on some other cool stuff for you in the short run as well as some really big projects I can't talk about just yet. As for the credits on screen, these are channel members on YouTube which grant you access to sweet emotes and badges next to your name in the comments of any of my videos, as well as sneak peeks at upcoming projects and more starting at just 99 cents. Click the blue join button next to the subscribe button down below to learn more. In any case, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one.